Hey, happy Friday, you eccentric person, you. Today, we're gonna to be covering Starship current events. We'll debrief this week's Starlink 2 mission, get our freak on for both crew and cargo dragon, look at the upcoming launch manifest, and finish with today's honorable mention. I'm Kevin, and this is SpaceX in the News. So, over the holidays, SpaceX acquired the keys to yet another Boca Chica property as they press forward with their plans to turn the local area into a spaceport. This property resides outside the local hamlet, and SpaceX has wasted no time clearing away some of the unwanted vegetation. A few homes, both in and out of the small hamlet, still remain to be purchased by SpaceX. Those residents have been given until March 31st to sell, or risk being bust off their property every time SpaceX needs to launch or test a Starship rocket. And speaking of tests, this week we were finally made aware of what Elon and SpaceX were planning with those bulkheads that they had seemed to be working feverishly on these past few weeks. Last night, Boca Chica closed Highway 4, the main and really only highway that runs through the location, for the first time since the explosion of Mark 1. And the reason for doing so was to pressurize a new test tank for Starship SN1, formerly known as Mark 3. SpaceX transported the test tank down the highway to the launch pad site, where they began filling it with some sort of gas or super cold liquid, probably nitrogen or oxygen. Now, in typical SpaceX fashion, this was a test of failure, and that's exactly what happened. And you can see that the top bulkhead didn't go soaring through the air like a coked out pelican, and that's because they strapped it down. But the bulkhead was still a loss because part of its surface was caved in. Building super light yet super durable fuel tanks that can withstand the pressure of super chilled elements is super hard. And SpaceX is trying to get ahead of the welding issues they encountered a while back during their Mark 1 pressure test. Whether or not the tank successfully withstood the amount of pressure needed before combusting has yet to be made public at this time. Psych! Actually, while I was editing this video, Elon tweeted that the joint between the dome and the barrel, that weld, made it to 7.1 bar. Which is good, considering they only need about 6 bar for orbital flight. So yeah, and great success! But as far as Coco and the Cape is concerned, the only activity going on is happening over at Pad 39A, as crews continue to build up Starship's launch pad. Otherwise, all remaining effort has gone toward Boca Chica support, loading up more stainless steel rolls and jigs on Go Discovery for transport out west. This week, SpaceX launched another batch of 60 Starlink satellites into low Earth orbit on a booster that had flown three times before. Once it successfully landed on the autonomous drone ship Of Course I Still Love You out in the Atlantic Ocean, it became only the second booster to have done so for a fourth time. It has since made its way back to port and is currently being prepped for transportation back to SpaceX facilities for refurbishment. The fairing, on the other hand, didn't have so much success. Miss Tree did attempt to catch a half in her net, but barely missed and caught the parachute on one of its arms, luckily not damaging it again. But from what I've gathered, it sounds like the fairing half may have been damaged before or upon hitting the water and was lost. The other half was fished out of the waters after splashdown by Go Navigator, as expected. But the important thing is all 60 satellites successfully deployed, even after the second stage had to make a slight orbital injection correction burn. This puts the total number of Starlink sats placed in orbit at 180, although a small portion of those are no longer in service. And Elon tweeted that it will take at least four more launches until Starlink is operational in North America. He also tweeted out a humorous but typical Elon set of instructions for Starlink terminal operation. 90% of my fellow men looking at the screen right now won't even finish reading the tweet, because as we all know, instructions are of the devil. An issue that had been circulating in the news over the past couple weeks is the light pollution these satellites reflect, creating issues for astronomers. Well, Patricia Cooper, SpaceX's Vice President of Satellite Government Affairs, is recently quoted as saying that Starlink's levels of brightness and visibility was even a surprise to them, and that they appear brighter after deployment but lessen to a magnitude of 5 as they ascend into their final orbit. To help mitigate this issue, on the last mission they painted the bottom of one Starlink sat, dubbed Dark Sat, with a light absorbing material. But it will take until the end of February until the sat reaches its final orbit and serious measurements can begin. The AAS has said that SpaceX is being very receptive and proactive to the problem and has appeased members by meeting with them half a dozen times via teleconferences and in-person meetings. And while the problem gets sorted out, SpaceX will continue to launch their Starlink satellites, which are designed to be operational for five years before deorbiting and disintegrating in the atmosphere. In other news, SpaceX has also successfully recovered the Cargo Dragon capsule from their previous CRS-19 mission to the International Space Station. It was released from the station on Tuesday morning at 0500 hours and splashed down about five hours later in the Pacific, bringing back 3,800 pounds of science and supplies. 
This was the second to last mission for this version of Dragon. Future versions will be an offset of Crew Dragon, which by the way has been delayed another week for its in-flight abort test due to pending Air Force Eastern Range approval and spacecraft processing, aka paperwork. The new launch date is now January 18th, but not to worry, it's gonna happen soon, okay? Because yesterday the first stage booster with the second stage simulator was spotted rolling out to pad 39A for its static fire. At this time, those fires have not yet been ignited. Other remaining launches for the month include Starlink 3 and 4, although no specific dates are available at this time. And now let's do today's honorable mention. Just hours ago, NASA welcomed 11 new astronauts to its ranks that will endeavor to the space station, moon, and Mars. These men and women spent the last two years training to go to space and were the first to graduate since NASA announced their Artemis program. Of the 11, seven are military veterans, three of which are from the Navy, and one of those three was a SEAL. Hoo-ya! Oh, and two additional astronauts from the Canadian Space Agency also graduated. How about that, eh? I'm not your buddy, friend. Well, that's all I have for you guys today, but before I go, I wanna leave you with these images that will ruin your weekend. Elon visited China for a Tesla revealing, and despite popular belief, he is not having an epileptic seizure. And although what he is doing is not a crime, it is offensive to the eyes. And China is known for disappearing people for a lot less. Hashtag free Hong Kong. I would also like to take a second to thank all my eccentric members and patrons for their love and support for this channel. For those of you that just don't have the coin, it's all good. I get it. I've been there. But you could also do me a rock solid by hitting that subscribe button and that like button. And don't forget to hit the bell so you never miss a sode. You don't want to miss an episode and fall behind now, do you? The answer to that riddle is nay. I wish you all a great weekend and until the next one, Godspeed.